An emergency has been declared in San Francisco and in New York over monkeypox. The World Health Organization has put out a statement saying that gay men should refrain from engaging in adult relations. But this has created a weird, paradoxical news cycle where on Fox Business, Ned Ryan, who was recently on Timcast IRL, was called bigoted because he said basically what the World Health Organization said. And then the response from the other guests were like, it's not about being gay. And he was like, NBC News is reporting that the gay community is experiencing an outbreak of monkeypox. It's not about being bigoted. It's about talking about the science. Now, I'll tell you what does not help the situation. Tucker Carlson did a segment the other day where he said that he did an audience poll and they came up with a new name for monkeypox. Okay, okay, let's slow down there a minute. You see, Apparently, uh, I think the World Health Organization, or uh, it may be the CDC, I think the World Health Organization wanted to change the name of monkeypox because they think it's racist or something. I don't know. And so they were going to change the name. And then Tucker is making a joke about it by calling it schlong COVID. Okay, well, it's not COVID. It's a pox. And I get it. I want to tell you guys something for this. it, It doesn't it doesn't do it for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think Tucker is, does a good job of debunking and calling stuff out, but I just get, ah, oh man, it's somewhat frustrating when you get stories like this that uh, uh, it's just, it, it, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I just feel like it's not doing anything. But I will say Marjorie Taylor Greene recently made comments on Twitter that, you know, about Dr. Rachel Levine that a lot of people laughed at. I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I talk to regular people and tell them what's being said, they laugh at it. When I tell people about Tucker Carlson, like, what are your thoughts on this? I'll message them. They're like, it's hilarious. But, you know, I wouldn't say it publicly, right? Because the, the, it's, it's, it's meant to be a joke, I guess. I think what people underestimate, what the left underestimates, is that Americans like offensive comedy. They like offensive jokes. They like it. They like it when a guy goes up on stage and insults members of the audience. To a certain degree, I, I think it's funny, too. But it's always when it's like in good fun. And this is the issue right now. Newsweek says Tucker Carlson slammed over homophobic new name for monkeypox. Cruel. Here's the real big news from TimCast.com. San Francisco and New York declare public health emergencies over monkeypox outbreak. Global data show viruses primarily impacting the gay community. Well, Tucker doesn't care about the people who are mad. They don't like him. He doesn't like them. That's not going to change. So that's what he does. And there's probably a lot of people who watch this, you know, watch my shows who are like, eh, they like Tucker. He's fine. Well, I don't do that, right? I won't, I won't, uh, granted, I I very recently insulted some public officials, but, uh, you know, for the most part, I try to refrain from this. So, you know, uh, I guess let he who's without sin cast the first stone. Here's the story. Tucker Carlson has been accused of homophobia and being cruel after joking about changing the name of monkeypox. On his Thursday night show, the Fox News host joked that the decision to change the name of the name of the disease as cases continue to be concentrated among the gay community. In early June, a group of scientists, many based in Africa, issued a position paper calling for a name change for the disease to avoid the negative impact it was having on people from different communities. Hold on there a minute. What? Okay, wait. They say, quote, we propose a novel classification of MPXV, monkeypox virus, that is non-discriminatory and non-stigmatizing and aligned with best practices in naming of infectious diseases in a way that minimizes unnecessary negative impacts on nations, geographic regions, economies, and people, and that consider the evolution and the spread of the virus. Monkeypox got named because it was first isolated in monkeys. What are you saying? This is the problem with these people. They're like, Tucker Carlson's being homophobic, man. And it's like, dude, these people are associating monkey, the word monkey with racial, giving it racial connotations. That's insane. Monkeys exist. You know, it's the craziest thing because we put out the, uh, we had that shirt. We have the shirt, I am, I am a gorilla. And there were people tweeting that it was racist to be like, I'm like, dude, it's a meme about a book. It has nothing to do with race. If you look at monkeys and gorillas and think racial things, you are racist. And that's what it is, isn't it? It's crazy to me. Carlson also shared a clip from his show on his Twitter page 
where he said that due to a popular vote following a poll, monkeypox will now be known as schlong COVID. Monkeypox is about the coolest name for a disease. Can't come today. I've got the monkey, Carlson said. Okay. But they're changing the name of, of, because of racism or something. Well, for once, we don't know who they are, and we're not going to allow it. We are going to change the name this time. We are going to do it with the public's help because democracy is real. So we had a vote. There was no ballot harvesting. You can trust our vote. <laughs> you can trust our counting. And the new name for monkeypox is now officially, and we are declaring it Schlong COVID. That won our audience election result with about 40% of the votes. So let Rochelle Walensky at the CDC know. I'm, I'm curious, like, what is this? What is this? Adam Schiffelis, Hunter Hives, midterm variant. What does this solve? You know, this is the thing that really gets me. When Tucker Carlson says something like this, like, I guess a lot of people find it funny. His audience enjoys it. I'm sure, like I mentioned, there are people who watch my show probably enjoy it too. And my attitude's just like, dude, I am trying so hard to create the rational space where regular people can be pulled out of the cult. This is a weapon against that. Now, I suppose you could argue that we often say we're having fun, we're laughing, but this comes at the expense of others, or at least it can be perceived that way. In which case, you know, I get it. I get the joke. It's, I know a lot of people are laughing at it. It is what it is, man. In response to Carlson, journalist Maria de, de Los Angeles tweeted, Tucker Carlson, schlong COVID, not only sophomoric and unbelievably cruel, it's also not original. And to prevent COVID-related erectile dysfunction, add to prevent covid related erectile dysfunction in 2021. Oh, no. Schlong COVID was already used because people got ED from COVID. Terry Kennedy said, you're such an effing a-hole and homophobic straight male poser, Pox. Dude, I just don't. I Whatever. I, I'll admit that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's tweet, I think, was over the top and we all kind of laughed. Like, you know, we had uh, Jamie Kilsey on the show and he was like, how do you take something so reasonable and turn it into that. And we're, so Marjorie tweeted about Dr. Rachel Levine. And the point was like saying something like we shouldn't be giving children sex change operations. I think most people, the overwhelming majority would probably agree with. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted something that offended a lot of people. And it was silly, but it did bring attention to it. And I suppose the issue here is no one who hates Tucker is going to like them, like him if he's a reasonable person. So he's going to keep being keep on being Tucker. That is what it is. I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean, I guess people are the people who like it, like it. People don't don't. And they're never going to like each other. Maybe that's pessimistic. That's why I try to avoid that, at least for the most part. I'm not perfect. You know, here's the real big breaking news. The reality is monkeypox is spreading among the gay community. That is not to dig at them for being gay. But I don't care if you're gay, straight or whatever. If you are promiscuous and spreading diseases, there is something to be said about your responsibility for what's happening. And the problem is you, you had Ned Ryan go on Fox Business with Kennedy, <clears throat> and he said, he basically said, stop going to gay orgies. This is real. It's not meant to insult people for being gay. It's literally what they're publishing in, uh, uh, in New York to get the monkeypox vaccine. You have to be a gay man. You have to have engaged in, in relations with multiple anonymous individuals to qualify for the vaccine. And you have to not have it. OK, well, look, they, there are these threads where they're like, stop pre preaching uh, abstinence. It's not going to happen. And I'm just like, dude, there is monkeypox. The World Health Organization is saying you got to be responsible. But they're not. We get banned, we get attacked, we get insulted for calling that out. That's nuts. To see Fox get woker than the woke on this one, woker than NPR. NPR has run numerous stories about how monkeypox is impacting the gay community. You know, but Fox business. Timcast.com reports. San Francisco and New York State have now both declared health emergencies over breakouts of the monkeypox virus as cases climb and vaccines are limited. San Francisco's emergency declaration is a legal action that mobilizes city resources, accelerates emergency planning, streamlines staffing, and allows the city to have its costs reimbursed in the future by state and federal governments. San Francisco showed during COVID that early action is essential for protecting public health. 
San Francisco Mayor London Breed said in a statement, we know that this virus impacts everyone equally, but we also know that those in our LGBT community are at greater risk right now. Many people in our LGBTQ community are scared and frustrated. This local emergency will allow us to continue to support our most at risk while also better preparing for what's to come. They shut down churches. They made your children surround their desks with plastic and wear masks. The least they can say is it's time to stop for a little bit. They did. New York, I believe it was New York City or maybe New York State actually put out a PSA saying not to engage in relations. They said, stay fully clothed, be careful, no kissing, no cuddling. Here's what you can do, they said. But they're not doing anything hard and strict. And I think the issue is you can't. Monkeypox is spread through bodily fluids directly. So, you know, people are going to have pustules all over their faces and hands or whatever. And people are going to to avoid it. It's spreading because people are choosing to engage in relations. That's it. So shutting things down would be the same as a respiratory ailment. New York State's health commissioner also issued an emergency declaration on July 28th. Based on the ongoing spread of the virus, which has increased rapidly and affected primarily communities that identify as men who have sex with men, and the need for local jurisdictions to administer vaccines, I've declared monkeypox an imminent threat to public health through New York State. State Commissioner of Health Dr. Mary T. Bassett said in a statement, currently San Francisco has 261 confirmed cases. There are 700 reported cases in California. New York has 1,341 confirmed cases. Globally, there have been more than 21,000 confirmed cases, according to the latest data from the CDC. The data shows the United States has become the capital for monkeypox cases. I mean, just come on, man. So unlike COVID-19, monkeypox is not a respiratory virus, and it spreads through skin-to-skin contact. It can also spread through sexual intercourse. So I want to warn all of you people, Tucker fans, you're making these jokes about it. It's going to be funny when you get it. And why will you get it? You're going to shake someone's hand. That's right. Someone's going to have a filthy hand. They're going to shake your hand. You're not going to wash your hands. You're going to get it. And then you're going to be like, uh, and then everyone's going to point at you and be like, schlong COVID much? What have you been doing? There are stories about children getting monkeypox. And the insinuation is that they're being abused. You need to understand it could be from cuddling. It could be from spit. It could be from people just being dirty people and touching other people. It does spread that way. The reason it's spreading primarily among the gay community is because for a a virus like this, intercourse contact in high volume is going to rapidly spread bodily fluids, to put it simply. But I'll tell you this, my friends, you want to come out and make these jokes. Someone's going to shake your hand and you're going to regret it. As health experts have warned, monkeypox is primarily impacting the gay community. The New England Journal of Medicine published a study showing that around the world, 98% of people infected with monkeypox were gay or bi men. According to the data, 75% were white, 41% had HIV, and the median age was 38. Transmission was suspected to have occurred through sexual activity in 95% of those infected. The World Health Organization on July 27th recommended that gay and bi men limit their number of partners to protect themselves and help slow the spread of the virus. Okay. When Ned Ryan came out on Fox and said that, they called him a bigot. Dude, it's just so insane. San Francisco has announced that it will receive an additional 4,220 vaccines to treat the outbreak. The health department initially requested 35,000 vaccines, but has only received about 12,000. New York will have about 30,000 doses allocated for upstate and 80,000 for New York City. In addition to vaccination, officials are recommending ask your partners whether they have a rash or other symptoms, avoid skin to skin contact with someone who has a rash or other monkeypox related symptoms, contact a healthcare provider following exposure or symptoms. If you or your healthcare provider suspect you may have monkeypox, isolate at home. If you can, stay in a separate area away from other family members or pets. I'll stress it again, man. When you have a disease that spreads through skin contact, of course, people who are having orgies are going to have a higher, um, a higher propensity towards contracting the virus. But that doesn't mean it can't be spread through just shaking someone's hand or giving them a hug or cuddling with someone. So this is not nearly as infectious as many other ailments. It, it is, is a several thousand people around the world. Pay attention to the, to the issues, you know. Now, I wonder, the one good point that 
Tucker Carlson made was that he said it was the midterm variant, meaning it may be that with November coming up, there is an issue at play to scare people again to help secure votes for one party or another. Perhaps. I'll tell you, something seems to be happening. New York City Emergency Management. They put out a a PSA on nuclear strikes and how to survive them. They now have this from a couple days ago. A go bag has everything you need in case you need to leave home in a hurry. Every household member should have one, including kids. What will you pack? Non-perishable snacks, bottled water, copies of important documents. For more ideas, visit nyc.gov. Why is New York City telling people to have go bags? Okay, look, I think it's a really good idea. Do you have a go bag? You should have a go bag. No joke. Let me just, you know what's funny? I love that they're putting out this PSA when I did uh, ads for safe and ready meals. And people were like, Tim is promoting emergency food. What an idiot. Now your city is telling you to have your non-perishable foods. Uh Uh-huh. Do you? Or are you some moron who is like, I'm not a prepper. Have a go bag. Why? Uh, Let's say a fire happens. What are you going to do when you're sitting in your apartment and a fire breaks out? What are you going to bring? Are you going to panic and try and, what do I grab? What do I grab? Or do you already have a go bag and the fire breaks out and your bag is right by your door and you just run and grab it and run out? Maybe there's shoes right next to it, slip-ons. Here's what I recommend. Easy to slip on shoes next to your go bag. Marie Colvin, I believe was her name, journalist. She was in uh, Syria, and they were evacuating a building that was being shelled. She didn't have shoes. She ran back in to get her shoes. The building collapsed on her, killing her. I believe that's the story. Now, a lot of people laughed and said, she went in for shoes. I can't believe it. That's so irresponsible. No, you need shoes. You see, being out in a battlefield with shrapnel and glass shards during shelling without shoes, you're in serious trouble. Now, she probably would have been better off with bloodied up feet than being dead. That's a reality. Think about that when you're putting together your go bag and there is something that may be happening. Have shoes, have a jacket, have everything you might need. Now, in the context of what's happening with these emergencies, my point is, with the midterms coming up, they're going to try and convince you to be scared. Be scared, vote for us, we're the only ones who can help you. We've got a monkeypox outbreak, and the photos are horrifying. People are posting photos of the outbreak on their faces, and it is I got I, I, I'm not going to show these photos, man. I, but you look at those photos and you're going to be like, I ain't touching anybody. New York and, you know, you, don't, you do not want these postules. It is horrifyingly sickening. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. It's just this really gross stuff. So pay attention. But I may, maybe they're just trying to rile you, rile you up and scare you. So the New York, you know, New York City is coming out and being like, do you have your emergency bag? What if a nuclear war happens? I suppose, though, people tend to vote Republican. They tend to vote law and order when there's emergencies. So maybe this will all backfire on the Democrats. I have no idea. What I can only say is we should be treating the monkeypox pandemic seriously. When, it, when the outbreak first started, it wasn't among gay men, or at least we didn't see it that way. And a lot of people told me it wasn't going to spread and that it was just overhyped nonsense. Now it's spreading. Now there's talks of, you know, policies to control it. Yo, I don't think they're going to lock you down over this because it's hard to spread. But they are going to they may put in place restrictions that can benefit them. And they may say this. We don't want a pandemic to avoid that. The smart thing to do is universal mail in voting. That's right. We don't want you going to a shared space where everyone's touching all of the things and then that contact could result in monkeypox. You don't want monkeypox, do you? We need universal mail-in voting. It's the only way. That way it's safe. Because by the time the letter gets to you, it's not going to be contagious or infectious. And when you drop it in the mailbox, no one's got anything to worry about. But if you go to a polling booth, who knows who's touched it? Someone could sneeze or get bodily fluid somewhere and you can touch it and then it gets in your mouth and then you don't want monkey pox, do you? I mean, to be honest, kind of a fair point. Yeah, I don't want monkey pox. But I wonder, is the threat really as severe as they're saying it is? That's the question. With San Francisco and New York declaring emergencies, it may be fortuitous that an election is coming up. But it's still a ways away. So the question is, will it get worse?
Unfortunately, I think the answer is yes, because we've already seen many of these men who've been infected say outright they will not stop. And if they won't, it's going to spread and it's going to spread rapidly and probably hit every corner of the gay community. And it will spread outside of the gay, gay community. So when uh, Tucker Carlson makes his joke and says schlong COVID, you know, you got to you got to you got to be careful. You know, don't tempt the fates, man, because Tucker, someone's going to shake his hand. And then what? Well, to his credit, he's like isolated somewhere anyway, far away from cities. So he probably won't get it. But sooner or later, these people who are laughing about it will find it, they'll find it'll, it'll find its way to them unless you get out of the cities, you take precautions, you wash your hands, you treat it seriously. Treating it like a joke, I don't think is going to be a good thing. You know, I got to be honest. I'm sad to see these people are getting sick. I but I but I will also say, dudes, you need to just take two weeks off two weeks if ever if but you can't trust people. What do you do? Um, have a committed relationship. Don't have anonymous encounters. Take the advice of the CDC and the World Health Organization and all that. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.